everyone my name is pritam and you're watching tech with pri welcome to my channel and i'm back with another exciting technical video and this is the second video of our new series that we started service now integrations so i know you are all excited for this series and what are the things you are going to learn throughout this series and why this series is important why service now integrations important to learn at this moment i have already shared in my last video right so if you missed that video guys i would request you go and watch it out in that video i have mentioned why we are starting this series and also in detail what are the things we are going to learn right so this is the second video and as the name of the video you understand that we are going to learn about web service integration and the rest the rest api very very popular rest api so let's quickly see what are the things we are going to cover in this video okay okay so we would start with what is web service integration very very important we would understand the concept of it with example also i'll give you a real world example okay so that you can understand how things are working next we would see what is rest then we would understand the component of rest api with practical example okay so we would understand web service integration with practical example then we would understand rest we would understand the component of rest with again with practical example so that you understand the concept of web service integration and rest today in this video i'm going to make sure once you watch the full video you would have understanding of web service integration and rest trust me and finally we will end this video by discussing some popular status code and with their meaning so what is status code i will just tell you don't worry but make sure you watch the full video to understand each of this concept guys remember once you understand this video the next videos when we will get into the service now web service integration service now rest message okay outbound inbound everything will become very very easy for you with that note let's get into it and understand about web service integration web service integration what does it mean so let's let's start with some definition okay then i'll explain it so it is a process of enabling applications to connect and exchange data each other using web services okay so by the definition we understand that two applications can connect with each other and exchange data okay using some web services that's the concept of web service integration but let's understand with an example very simple so in the definition it talks about applications different applications so let's take one application this is the app 1 and this is the app 2 okay simple now the app 1 want want some data from app 2 so now app 1 is trying to get some information from app 2 based on the requirement so app 1 required some data okay that is available in the app 2 how they are going to do that so app 2 is saying okay if you want some data for me then this is an information for you okay you can read it out in here it is written clearly that how you can request a data from me okay app 2 is saying how you can request a data from me uh, what are the things you need to follow what are the protocols are there what are the methods are there that you need to use right then only you can access my data in your app okay so app 1 says okay fine so app 1 has gone through the information and then app 1 is requesting for the data to the app 2 and app 2 what it is doing it is sending back the response So app two is saying I am sending my response to you. So that in general is the integration. I think you got an idea like how things are working in a basic level. So let's take a deep dive and understand with a real world example, and I'm sure that you will understand in more better way. So let's see that real world example. So this is a phone we have. This is a weather app you can see where we are uh, you know getting the information of Seattle uh, temperature, right? So uh, 79 degree Fahrenheit. definitely and some excessive heat warning and there are some forecast is also showing and last 10 day forecast so that's what we get normally in a weather app okay so the question is how this weather app is accessing the live data okay if you refresh here the data will change if the weather gets change it will automatically update so how it is updating where the logic is written is the logic is written in the app is all the locations data like from seattle if i search for mumbai kolkata whatever location then all this information are stored in the app how it is working so we will understand that and this web service integration concept will gets clear okay so this is in our previous example this is the app 1 so this is also we can call it as a client who is requesting for some data the request is that he needs to see the temperature of seattle okay 
this is the another app or web application which is called the weather.com okay so just for understanding so this weather.com this web service provides all the details of the temperature of different location in their database and that database keeps updated on a regular basis so that you know latest temperature can be found right and the forecast and everything right so this is the main thing so this weather.com is the main source where all the information is already there okay in this second app in our previous example now in this weather app does not have any config so what this weather app is doing this weather app is saying okay so i need information from you hey buddy i need information from you whenever anyone use this weather app and search for a location they should be able to see the temperature current temperature and with all this uh, hourly forecast and 10 days forecast all these details okay i need your, i need your help on that and this app too or weather.com says okay so this is a web service you have contacted also we have an api of our weather.com so api stands for application programming interface so this is the information page in the last example that i have used right in this page in this api of weather.com many things are mentioned like how to authenticate so this weather.com is saying okay you can get uh, the data of seattle or any location first you have to authenticate second you will need to you need to see that how you will request me so that you get the data what is the format of the response i send back to you and what are the different url or endpoint to access different resource these all things you need to know now all these things in detail we will go when we will create a service now rest message and all these things when we will understand but as of now i think you got the point that this api is nothing but some rules and protocols which needs to follow for an application to connect with this app if there is another weather app who wants to connect with weather.com they have to follow this api documents once this app one or the weather app reads all this information authenticate and request so it sends a request requesting for seattle so suppose someone is searching for seattle like this picture and then weather.com is saying okay first it will check okay authentication is fine you are requesting in a proper format so i will send you the response so it sends back the response in in general json format okay so most of the cases so the response that application returns okay to the client so this is the client okay so it is in the json format because json is a very lightweight and the format is something like that so don't get confused this is very very simple you know in json always it's there as key value so id is a key this is a value this is again main is id value is clear description is id value is clear sky so in this format this information is coming back here to this application okay then this application is converting that that json format to the object and then accessing the data that's something we will practically do in upcoming videos okay when we will when we will use the rest api in service now okay but i think if you have watched my service now development series in this video right this script include video i have shown you that uh, what is json and how you can access json data right uh, using json per se and json stringify right so those things have already been discussed in this video i think the concept is very much clear right this is app 1 this is app 2 requesting for data app 1 is saying app 2 is saying okay we have a api document that you need to follow in the api document everything is mentioned and then i'm requesting the data the request is returning in the json format and it is getting displayed this all thing so this whole things we will develop practically okay when we will connect our service now to external application so don't worry on that but the understanding has to be clear okay so now the concept of api is clear so it's rules and protocols uh, that helps uh, one application to connect with other okay now we understand the api it's time to understand the rest api now before understanding rest api we would understand what is rest stands for so rest stands for representational state transfer so many of you i think know if you don't know in detail but the full form is very common right representational state transfer but in this video right now i'm going to explain you what does it mean i won't just go and start explaining about different components of rest api but you also need to understand what this rest stands for what is the meaning of representational state state transfer why it says like that so to understand that let me get back to the previous slide okay now you can see whenever someone is asking for the temperature of seattle so it sends a request to the weather.com in a proper way following all this api documentation so it search for the seattle with the with some http method called get that we will see later but it looks for the seattle record it founds current state of that 
uh, value what is the temperature and it returns the in a json format okay so it's returning the current state of that particular location what you are searching for now after two minutes or three minutes if you refresh it you would see maybe from 79 it could come to 77 or 78 like the weather can change right after 10 minutes or after 15 minutes or maybe after one hour and you get the updated data so again whenever you are refreshing the request is again sending to the weather.com okay weather.com is giving you the current state so in this weather.com database the data is getting updated continuously right so it gets the updated state of the data previously the value of the state was 79 now maybe it is updated to 78 so the updated state is getting transferred to your client and the json format is getting represented in this client or in this app okay so it could be xml format so there is also a popular uh, format called xml for you know sending data but like i said json is more lightweight and very easy to read also XML is very easy to read but uh, most of the cases is JSON so based on the requirements for some application maybe XML is required okay then the data will come in the XML format for some where JSON is required it will come in the JSON format so it is representing based on the need so that state transfer so the state which is getting transferred from here to the app with the representation of the weather right that's why it's the representational state transfer in this case is the temperature or the value right the state is transferring from server to client or to the app in representational format that is either json or xml that's why it's called rest representational state transfer so i think now the understanding of the full form of rest is clear why it says representational state transfer right i hope you never forget this so I, like I said, it is a specific type of API that follows the REST architectural style. Now let's see what are the different REST architectural style. And don't worry, we'll understand with an example. So what are the components of REST API? We have resources, endpoints, HTTP methods. We have different HTTP methods, get, post, put, patch, and delete. Okay, we will understand that, don't worry. Uh, authentication, headers, and finally, server response and status code. Now let's understand this with another practical example. This is gonna be very, very interesting. Okay, so this is a website called uh, bookscape.com. So where you can online, uh, where you can order books online, okay? So the first component of REST was resource. So suppose this is the app two, okay? This is the application. This service I'm gonna use in my mobile app. Okay, now we won't go into the API details and documentation as of now because we are understanding the concept. Okay, those things we will do when we will practically implement in the service now. But now for the example, you can see we have different books, right? So these books can be considered as a resource. Okay, so the first component of REST was resource. So these books can be considered as resource, different resource. And all resource have different endpoint, means different URL. So for an example, this atomic habits, if I open this book, you can see the URL gets changed to product details slash atomic habits. And this is some identif identification number for the book. This is unique, right? So the endpoint or the URL gets changed. So if I need to access this book in my app, my app means the app one. Okay. This is app two. So I need to use this endpoint first. Second, if I need to show this information of the book in my application in my app one then i need to use a http method called get so the get method get used to get information from the other web other web services if i need information of that book i will use a method called get okay so this is the first get method we understand resource so these different books are resource so they have unique name here some unique price and all other things second thing is that Second, we understand the endpoint and URL. So for different resource, we have different URL. Next, the different HTTP method. So if I want to get access to that book, this book details, okay, name of the books, maybe the author. So I need to use a get method. And the resource, if I change on another book, you can see there is dark psychology. For this URL will change. So this is a get method. Now the next thing is a post method. Post means when you are creating a resource. Okay, so creating resource means here, if we stick with the example, so suppose I want to order this book. So I'm gonna click on the buy now. So whenever I'm gonna click on the buy now, so an order will generate with my name and address, all this information, right? That could be considered as a HTTP post method when I'm creating a resource. Okay, that's the post method. 
then we have put method that is for the update suppose we are updating our address so here our address is stored okay our address is also a resource if I update my address that's also be considered as a put method patch means when we are updating something partially not fully but partially so suppose in a full record in an order suppose I'm changing the quantity after placing the order so like that so partial change that's for the patch and delete is for you can understand to if you are trying to delete something so next component we can see of authenticate authenticate is something that will help me to connect with my app app one with this service web service or app two okay so there would be some process some basic it can be basic authentication it can be OAuth so we will understand more about it and do some practical work don't worry on that next we have the response so suppose in from my app from my book app I am placing an order okay to buy this book then in my app I get a confirmation that my order has been placed successfully so that is a response from this web service or whenever we are searching for different category okay suppose in from our phone from our app one okay something like that this book so this book is coming to me with the get method that we talk about right get is responsible to uh, show the information from the web service right in your app that is also a response so you are requesting for okay I want to see this do it today book the picture of the book who is the author what is the price and everything so once you are clicking it the request has been sent like I have shown you in the PPT right when you choose that uh, temperature for Seattle it sends a request to weather.com in same way from my app when I am choosing this book it is sending the request to this bookscape.com and it is sending back to the sending back the response with a picture with a book name and everything so that is known as a response and finally there are some status code which are there that we will see now by which you understand whether your mission is successful or not so let's jump back to the ppt uh, final one popular status code with their meaning so once you request for something with a get method you get a result successfully so the status code should be 200 and you will see that practically when we will do in service now okay so it says request succeeded 201 it's got created so 201 in generally it shows when you do with the post method post method means whenever you create a new record okay like uh, buying a book placing an order right as simple as that next 204 so if you are requesting for something and you are not getting anything no content there is no content to return in that case you will get a 204 status code okay 400 bad request server could not understand the request next 401 401 there's an unauthorized this is very common so like I said you have to authenticate to application right before you ask for the data right so if the credential is not matched or if the OAuth or basic auth whatever you are doing if it is not working then you will get invalid credential and finally very popular one most of you have seen that 404 not found so requested resource could not be found so suppose you are typing an URL which actually does not exist then you could get 404 not found previously you have seen in these things in your browser but you never understood that what is happening in the back end so this is how it is happening the whole wall is using API no one is creating the whole thing in their app so suppose if I want to create a weather app right now for my phone or iOS or Android so I'm not gonna create the whole database and store all the data I'm not gonna do that already there are so many API available on the internet I can just use one of them to get the data from that web service it could be paid or it may not be so even if you see the stock results right in your phone application so this is also sending API request and coming back to you the real-time data now before we get into the service now integrations it is very very important you understand all these concepts I hope it is clear to you now now when we try to connect other application from service now you would understand all these things and when you will do it practically in your PDI then so you won't be following just my video whatever the steps I'm doing because already by watching this video you have cleared your concept of API you have cleared your concept of web service integration you have cleared your concept of different HTTP methods now it's time to practically implement it so in the next video we will start with the service now web service integration we will start with the outbound request and we will see it practically how it works isn't it excited okay so this is it for today guys I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you have learned a lot of things let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed the video and also don't forget to like the video and share this video so that it can reach out to many people see you in my next video bye bye take care